it was a long process, and it was unfortunate because I remember when you guys played in New Orleans, they had to send him home because he was still having problems. So uh, what has he meant? Because I watched him hit that three up top, and, and not that he gets to the line a lot or not that he gets a ton of rebounds, but the way he spaces and he's a pro, knows how to play, <laughs> what does he mean for down-the-road purposes in particular for the Celtics? Well, I, I think he's a cornerstone. He and Isaiah are the two cornerstones, and now we got to find out who's the third guy. Can it be Avery Bradley? Does it have to be someone coming in from the outside? But uh, I never realized, you know, we'd, we'd do Atlanta maybe twice a year. You know, I, I watched Al play his career. I thought he was a good player. I had I had no idea how complete a player he was until I started watching him on a game-by-game basis. I mean, he's, he's our first and second best passer on the team. He's become a rim protector in terms of block shots. He rebounds the ball. He's a quarterback out there directing people around, especially on defense. He, he really seems to like that, what you almost think of as that middle linebacker role. Um, he's just much more a complete player than I knew, and in the locker room, you couldn't ask for a nicer or more pleasant guy. So uh, I, I think they made a really great choice in Al. And, uh, again, I think Al, Al and Isaiah are, are key pieces for us right now going forward. And if they can add eight third feet, you know, again, I don't, I'm not trying to stop any rumors here, but if Gordon Haywood is the name that I hear pop up a lot, uh, then I think the Celtics really think they can make some noise in these and challenge Toronto and even challenge Cleveland. Uh, I heard you talking about Gordon Haywood, and do you think that's a real possibility that the, the Celtics really have a shot to, to land that type of piece 